we've reached the halfway point of awards, so thank you. No, it's great to be here tonight. Thank you to the Planck Center for putting this award on. I'm Mike Cummins, and I have the honor and privilege to introduce a man who needs no introduction, um, but he's the man who's probably had the single most impact on my career, and that's John Harris. I was holding for applause, so please. And I'm also lucky enough to stand up here and talk about one of John's favorite topics, which is John. Uh, John and I have worked together at three companies over 20 years almost, and it's a long time. And people say, why do you work with John so much? And honestly, it's because every day, John and I find some reason to laugh at something. Um, you know, we work hard, we write, we edit, we go to meetings, too many meetings. We talk, John talks way more than I do. We listen, we do all the things that communications professionals do. Um, but still, we find a way to laugh, even when the times are tough, and there's been some tough times and tough issues over those 20 years. Um, but John's not receiving an award in comedy tonight, unfortunately. He's receiving the Legacy Award for his commitment to uh, mentoring. And as one of his many mentees, I can assure you this is very well deserved. Now throughout his time at PR agencies like Ketchum and Medicus and his work on the corporate side with Sara Lee, like Ron Culp, um, Hillshire Brands and now ConAgra Brands, John has always taken the time to help others move forward in their careers. Now I remember the first time I met John, and you might remember this too, we both worked at Sara Lee Corporation. I was in corporate communications, John was running brand comms. Uh, he took me to lunch, and just to get to know each other, I was pretty new to the organization. We talked about the company, we talked about an impending uh, company move to the suburbs and how we were handling that. We talked about who the best 80s hair metal band was. So we covered all the usual topics. We both laughed until we had tears in our eyes, and maybe, maybe we fell in love that day, John. <laughs> but that lunch, it was fun. Um, but it led to, honestly, a better relationship between corporate communications and brand communications, which was something that the company really needed. And it gave me an ally in a large global company when I was just getting my feet wet. Um, and that was important to me, and it was a big help. So there's a method to his madness, believe it or not. And over the years, I've had the pleasure of continuing to learn more and more from John. Uh, the importance of nurturing relationships. We know John has more relationships than most people in this room. He knows everybody. Um, when to choose your battles, how to promote your work internally, which is something that I don't do as much and a lot of PR people don't do. He's always encouraged me to take on more. He regularly brings me to meetings even when I'm not invited, which I think is kind of funny, but he's like, no, you belong here, and he just brings me in, and next thing you know, I'm sitting in a meeting and contributing, and um, it's been a huge help for my career. Um, but he does that for a lot of people because he's always thinking about how to help others. Uh, whether it's the CEO, his fellow senior leaders, or someone new to the company, fresh out of school, John welcomes them into his office no matter how busy he is, and they'll, there they'll be treated to his open mind, valuable advice, a pep talk, even a song. I mean, this guy can do it all. Um, and of course, he's formerly mentored a lot of people. Our company has a mentorship program and John participates in that. And a lot of people uh, in this room might even be on the receiving end of that. But it's the informal mentoring and the career advice that he doles out and the plain caring that he does when no one is watching that makes him really special. And I'm gonna give you a few examples. Um, John once received a call from someone who was looking for a job, which is something I think happens about once an hour in his life. Um, and they wanted to network, and John found out that this person had been sent to him from a professional recruiter. So when the recruiters are sending people to John for career advice and to help them land their next job, you know that this man is connected and he's known and well-known as a mentor to others. Another time he sent me a resume from someone he knew and also something that happens fairly regularly, and I said, who is this person? He said, oh, it's my pharmacist's daughter. <laughs> I'm like, my pharmacist is whoever's at the CVS when I go to pick up a prescription. John has nurtured a relationship with this pharmacist and is now mentoring this person's daughter. I mean, 
It's unbelievable. Um, but it's no surprise to me and many of you that John is receiving the Legacy Award tonight. Um, he has left quite a legacy, and he's, he's certainly not done. Because mentoring is a part of his DNA, and he truly cannot stop himself from asking, how can I help? And that's why he serves on about 327 nonprofit boards right now. <laughs> but if you, uh, if you don't know John, if you're one of the few in the room who don't know John, please introduce yourself tonight, and you'll probably have a friend for life. And if you already know him, please congratulate him on this honor. But do me a favor, when you're talking with him tonight, ask him the simple question, John, is there anything I can do for you? I'm not sure that people ask him that very often, but he deserves it. And it's also a great habit to get into, and if you keep asking people that and keep helping people, it'll pay dividends not only for you, but the person that you're offering to help. And if you can do it even half as well as John has done, you might find yourself up here one day receiving an award for mentorship. So without any further ado, I allow me to introduce the man of the hour, the tower of power, the king of swing, John Harris. Gosh, Mike made me cry. My gosh. And I want to thank Mike for reading that script just as I wrote it. So thank you <laughs> very much, Mike. You could have cried a little, but it's okay. It's all right. What a truly special evening this is. I am beyond honored to receive the Planck Center's Legacy Award and grateful to the great Bridget Coffing. Uh, I don't know where Bridget is, but uh, I know that she recommended me and nominated me, so thank you so much, Bridget. <laughs> It's humbling to stand here before all of you, recognized for doing something that I love in an industry that's given me so much over the last three decades and to be in such impressive company. I'm just, I am just so appreciative. Uh, words do not even capture it. And over the years, I've learned a lot about the value of character, integrity, and the importance of being a considerate and generous colleague. I've mostly ignored those lessons, but I learned them nonetheless. I'm kidding. That sounded a lot better in rehearsal. <laughs> I want to begin by thanking my, my incredible family to my beautiful wife, Allie. Allie, please stand up. Everyone else asks for their wives to stand up. You have to. <laughs> you are truly the real brains behind this operation and the only one who truly can survive managing me. Uh, to our children, Maddie, who is here tonight, so she's my favorite, naturally. Um, and the others, Carly and Alex, who are not here tonight. You're all on your own incredible paths now, but no matter where I go or what I achieve, my greatest success will always be knowing that I'm your dad. And of course, I'd like to thank my six-year-old Cavapoo Winnie, who has been one of my greatest mentors as well. I'd like to recognize my amazing parents, Linda and Morty, and the best in-laws on earth, Rick and Miriam Sharfman, Thank you so much for your unwavering love and support. My goodness, I've had the pleasure to work with some extraordinary teams and leaders throughout my career from the agency world at places like Ketchum and Medicus to the Fortune 500 stage with PepsiCo and Sara Lee and Hillshire Brands and now ConAgra Brands and my amazing team is here tonight so I'm so grateful uh, for all of you being here. And, I have to tell you, I have a bit of imposter syndrome. I'm just a kid from Wayne, New Jersey. I was talking to Cheryl Forsatz about it, but thank you very much. We've got some people from Wayne tonight, thank you. I'll meet you at Vinny's Pizza Rama. Um, I was humble beginnings. You know, when I was young, my dad was mentally ill and had a very hard time uh, holding and keeping a job. And even though I was young, I vowed that I would dedicate my life to helping others in any way I could. And that's a promise I kept. I can't keep my promise of a diet, but that promise somehow I kept, and I, I live by it every single day. Even my path into public relations was anything but direct. I started at Rutgers as a pre-med student, switched to pre-law, and when I ran out of majors my mother could brag about, 
I settled on communications and naturally she, of course, was thrilled. <laughs> Back in the early 90s, communications didn't have the prestige it carries today, but something drew me in, I don't know, maybe it was the low pay. <laughs> maybe it was the long hours. Or it could have been being managed by someone eight months older than me, <laughs> who yelled a lot. I'm kidding, of course. They were nine months older. <laughs> what really attracted me and continues to intrigue me today is the thrill of crafting stories and narratives that can inspire change and shape public perception. It's a career built on passion, strategy, storytelling, and most important, as Mike said, relationships. And let's be honest, we are all only as good as the dear friends we keep and surround ourselves with. And as I mentioned, there's a very, very special group of CCOs that I stay in touch with across the country and, and actually around the world. And I'm so grateful for those folks as well. Tonight, I want to highlight a few mentors who have helped shape my career. My friend and CEO, Sean Connolly, who taught me that no one wants to follow a pessimist. The late Brenda Barnes, who showed me that it's okay to be tough, but never be mean. There's never a reason to be mean. Gil Bash, who was my very first mentor, who instilled the importance of setting clear goals and that nothing ever will beat hard work. To Bill Heyman, who drilled into me the value of creating and building authentic and long-lasting relationships. Rich Lawrence from my Pepsi days, who emphasized that knowing your business inside and out is truly the key in having a real, real impact. And Rick Sharfman, my father-in-law, who taught me everything else. I love you, Dad. Each of these individuals and so many others, some here tonight, like Ron Culp, have left, la left a lasting mark on my career and, and on my life, in my life. Their wisdom, encouragement, and support have all been invaluable, and I hope I've made you proud. Mentorship is the backbone of growth, not just in public relations, but in any industry. In our field, it's especially critical. Mentors just don't teach skills, they build confidence spark ideas and shape the next generation of professionals. It's not just about giving advice, it's about creating a space of continuous learning, support and guidance and giving back all the time. For me, the most rewarding part of my career has been watching those I've mentored, my, my wonderful mentees, grow into extraordinary leaders. And the truth is that I've learned much more from them than they've ever learned from me. Seeing their successes has been a constant source of pride and inspiration for me. As Mike said earlier, you know, sometimes these awards uh, go to people who might be wrapping up their careers, and I thought, well, geez, does the Planck Center know something I don't? <laughs> but here's the thing. I do feel in many ways, and I've spoke with so many students tonight, and it was so invigorating, and I'm so excited because I know the future of our industry is in great hands, great, great hands. And I have to tell you, uh, for me, I'm just excited about the future of our industry and the amazing things that the very talented professionals in this room and out there are going to achieve and accomplish. I look forward to continuing my career and staying a big part of it all, learning, mentoring, and contributing every step of the way. In closing, I want to thank my fellow inductees and everyone here tonight. Words really do not describe how much this award means to me and to the Planck Center. Thank you for this incredible honor. This is an evening I will never forget. Thank you. Thank you.